Welcome to a special edition of Back Nine Report TV. We're here for with our friend Kyle Rowland from the Toledo Blade. He's a sports writer there. And uh, Kyle, thanks so much for coming in and talking with us today. Absolutely. And if you want to talk golf, just call me up. <laughs> golf, all right. Kyle is a fellow golfaholic, just like the rest of us. Uh, he loves to play, and uh, we always have a good time. So we're going to talk about a few things in the golf world and you know, just kind of get a feel for maybe wrap up the 2017 year and maybe think a little bit about 2018. So, Kyle, let's kind of jump into it. You know, there's a lot of new rulings coming down from the USGA and the RNA that's going to be coming out in the future. What is your take on some of those rules? What is your thinking on that? Yeah, I guess I have a, a lot of thinking uh, on not phoning in uh, infractions during tournaments, hugely in favor of that. Uh, I've never liked how people can call in basically after the round, after players have signed the scorecard. Uh, I think it's unfair to the people who are on TV more often than maybe the lesser players. Um, obviously, the Lexi Thompson situation is what everyone thinks of when this comes about. Uh, I thought that was a very unfair thing for her to have to go through. Um, so for, from that standpoint, I like it. And some of the other rules that, that might come into effect here in the coming years, uh, for, for normal golfers, I like that you can just leave the pin in. I think it's easy for recreational golfers. A lot of people probably do it anyway. Um, and, and some of those types of things, I think, will make golf more, I don't know, welcoming or whatever for the everyman. There's maybe a, a snobbish you know, tone to golf. People still kind of say that. Um, so I think uh, the USGA is kind of going forward and becoming more progressive. Yeah, I think it's a step in the right direction for the USGA. Um, they're at least trying. Some of this stuff should have been done 20 years ago, Absolutely. without question. And so they are at least trying to take a look at it. Uh, one of the things, as Kyle mentioned, is the call-in rule, where they will no longer accept rule infraction call-ins from people sitting at home on their couch which was a stupid rule. He, re he referred to the Alexi Thompson situation last year in the ANA uh, Inspiration Championship, a major where she was assessed a four-stroke penalty f for mismarking her ball, which, you know, two of the strokes came because it wasn't recognized. Mm -hmm. It went overnight, so she signed an incorrect scorecard, which in the past would have been a DQ, yeah. but she got an additional two, four strokes, uh, and she, So Young Ru ended up winning the tournament. And, and not even that, but t she was told with what, like seven holes oh, remaining? Yeah. So, I mean, the whole, all the way around. It was, was it was. And, re and remarkably, still almost won. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, that's, that is a real positive. And like you say, they're trying to make some rules for the everyday golfer to make it a little bit more enjoyable, speed up play a little bit. So, that's a good thing. So, that's a positive. We kind of both agree on that. Absolutely. No, positive all the way around. Let's, uh, you know, probably <laughs> it happened right at the end of the year. But really, probably the biggest story in golf of all year was Tiger Woods returning to his own Hero World Championship and the year. What did you think of Tiger's performance? I mean, I thought it was great. I mean, I really did. I know he finished in the middle of the pack, uh, but the most encouraging thing, I mean, everyone last year was like, oh, wow, you know, he had the most birdies in the turn. But it still just didn't seem like he was back last year. This time, I mean, he's swinging just as hard as he has ever has. Uh, he's driving the ball past some of these huge bombers, Justin Thomas, uh, Dustin Johnson. Uh, so I, it seems like he's actually fully healthy. I don't know if he can go an entire year with that kind of club head speed. So I think that's kind of the next step. Like, is it going to continue? Uh, but as of now, I mean, it seems like he's gonna be a contender in these early tournaments in February going into the Masters. Yeah, I was completely surprised at how well he played in Albany in the Bahamas in the Hero World Championship. He really contended and, and showed great signs of brilliance. Uh, kind of a poor round on Saturday, but all in all, it really wasn't that bad. He did, you know, I think it was a 71. It was his only round in the 70s that week. Uh, so he played very well. But chipping was very good. Driving, excellent. Mm -hmm. Uh, putting was pretty strong. Yeah. And you could just see he was enjoying it. Oh, yeah. His body language, he was striding down the fairways, he was smiling a lot, he was having a good time uh, competing with those young guys and kind of showing them what he could do. The TV ratings were off the charts, okay? Just for that, really an exhibition, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people watched. Yeah. That bodes well going forward in the next year. What, so given that, what we saw what do you expect, expect from Tiger in 2018? Yeah, that's 
A great question. Um, I, I really don't know. I, I don't know if he's going to win or not. I mean, he, he easily can because it just seems like anyone in these fields now is capable of winning on the PGA Tour. It's as deep as I think the Tour has ever been. Um, the young guys are still really good, obviously. I don't know if he's going to win a major, but and the other problem is he only plays in tournaments with great fields. So I think that yeah. somewhat limits how well he can do. But without question, I mean, when he tees it up in February, I assume he'll probably be in contention. Well, it was a pretty strong field at the Hero World Challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was uh, 18 of some of the top players mm -hmm. in the world. Dustin Johnson was there. Justin Thomas. Uh, Hideki was yeah. there. He beat, uh, he beat Thomas and Johnson, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it was Jordan Spieth was mm -hmm. there. So, it was a strong field, and he played up to par. He played well in that. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit more optimistic. I'm going to go kind of go whole hog here, and I'm going to say Tiger's going to win in 2018. It may not be a major, yeah. but I think he, he might just win. I think he has the confidence. He's going to roll. I, you know, I love the way he's playing. And then the thing I didn't mention, he's playing pain free. And so the factor here to me is like you mentioned it, can he go the whole year? Can he not re-injure himself? Can he have the stamina to play a whole year? And people don't realize when you're walking every day on the PGA Tour and practicing, that's a lot of work. Yeah. It, it's, it's hard on your body. Now I know Tiger travels in his own jet, he takes his own bed with him when he goes <laughs> and all this stuff, okay? <laughs> but it's still hard work. Uh, the doctor has told him he can't practice quite as much as what he has in the pack, past, he has to limit that a little bit. So all those things given, fitness is a concern, Overall health is a concern, and then can he compete? Yeah, I mean, you pointed out some very underrated things, I think. Uh, number one, people think golf is just this easy sport or whatever. I mean, these guys, the, the torque and everything, they put their bodies through a lot. So, so that is something like, can he go the whole year with it? But mentally, he just seems like a totally different guy. He, he's free of all these bad thoughts and everything. I think that will be huge going forward. If he can stay in that frame of mind, I think he's much more likely to win. Um, so it's going to be exciting. I mean, I, I think it would be good for golf if he won. I don't think oh he necessarily God. needs to win. But if he does, I mean, it's back to Tiger Mania all over again. Oh, yeah. We, we saw that a little bit uh, at the Hero, with, like yeah. I say, with the TV ratings. And I, the, the, the sky is just a limit with this thing. I, I, I see it really big yeah. next year. And, and again, that brings up another issue. Um, you know, the PGA Tour is looking at new contracts, the LPGA Tour uh, contract, TV contracts are up for renewal. This might be the perfect timing. Ratings have been down for TV. If Tiger can lift those back up, they might be able to sign some new 10-year TV agreements and, and, you know, keep that money where it's where it's rolling in. I mean, it's like a great gift for PGA Tour Commissioner for Jay, Jay Monahan. Yeah. I mean, like, there, there, yeah. I don't think there's anyone happier at golf than that guy. Um, so it'll be, uh, it'll be huge. I, it's surprising, I think, a little bit, I mean, how well golf has continued to do post-recession and in a semi-post-Tiger world. Um, I still think the tour is in a phenomenal place. Uh, I mean, the purses are still gigantic, and I know guys like Rory and, and Ricky Fowler and Jordan Speed. I mean, they're not Tiger, they're not as marketable as him, but they're really likable players that, that are fairly visible. Um, so, so I think regardless, golf is at a good spot. Yep, I agree 100%. So <clears throat> moving on, you know, you mentioned some players there. Um, you watch a lot of golf on TV. We get to go to tournaments. We, you know, we go to different places around and, and see these guys play. If you're going to pay money to watch these guys play or you're sitting at home, who do you want to watch? Who do you want to watch play? That, that is a great question. Um, I guess I'll say Tiger. I mean, Tiger's not my favorite golfer in the world, but there's just there's an aura with him. Everyone knows it. So I'll say Tiger, Jordan Spieth, uh, Rory McIlroy, Phil Mickelson still. There's just an excitement and a flair still with Phil, even in this uh, stage in his career. And um, I don't know, kind of a, a wild card guy, may, maybe a Freddie Couples. I love, especially at the Masters, watching Fred Couples still. That's, that's great. <laughs> Fred is always one of my favorites. I, I saw him play in the U.S. Open here uh, when he was still in college, actually. And I sat on the range and watched him hit balls for about 45 minutes. 
Uh, and uh, I've watched his whole career ever since then. I've been a huge Freddie Couples fan, so that, that was a great answer. Uh, for me, uh, I'm going to go kind of the young guys. Um, I love watching Jordan Spieth, of course. Uh, he is just so consistent, and he has that will to win. He's not afraid of the big moment. Matter of fact, when things are the toughest or when he's in the hunt, that's when he gets better, that, and that's the mark of a true champion. I, I love to watch him when he's in those situations. Ricky Fowler, you know, a little bit of the flair that he plays with. I think he brings a really nice addition to the tour from that. Uh, would like to see him win a little bit more, of course, like everybody else. We expect a lot from him because of the great amateur career that he had. And he's had a nice career, don't get me wrong, but we'd like to see him win, especially in those major tournaments a little bit. Um, Dustin Johnson. And I, I, I say Dustin, not for the reason that you think, yeah, I like to watch him hit the ball long. That's mm -hmm. fun, and he hits that fade, you know, and he, it's it's wonderful. But when he's dialed in the last year and a half, the way he's hit his wedges, there's nobody yep. hits wedges better than Dustin Johnson right now when he's on. I, I love to watch him hit those wedges. And, you know, you mentioned Rory McIlroy. We didn't see much of Rory this year because of injury. Uh, first year, only well, second year on tour, he didn't win in his career. Um, but my favorite European right now is John Rahm. Mm -hmm. uh, I love to watch this guy play. And I love to watch him hit the driver. I mean, he's aggressive. He hits it long. I like his swing. It's very simple. Again, he plays that fade. Uh, he's fun to watch. Plus, he plays with a lot of intensity and he gets a little mad at himself sometimes. So that brings a little bit, <laughs> you know, a little extra to me. And then the other guy that I've liked for a long time, and, and uh, I like guys who are consistent. And Matt Kuchar is consistent just year in, year out, week in, week out. He's right there all the time. He's one of the most consistent guys ever. Uh, they call him the human a ATM on, on tour. Uh, <laughs> he always makes a big check. So I love watching uh, Matt Kuchar. So um, let's ask one more. So staying with, sticking with the PGA Tour, uh, what is your most enjoyable tournament that you watch? I mean, this is a really easy one for me. I mean, the Masters. Yeah. It, I mean, it's it's not only is it my favorite golf tournament, it's my favorite sporting event every year. And I you mean, cover a lot of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, you it, cover I just, a lot of good stuff. Yeah. College I, football, yeah. uh, NBA basketball. Yeah. You cover a lot of good stuff. Yeah. I mean, I just, it's, since a very young age, the Masters has just been the event for me. I watch... I mean, beginning on Monday on the Golf Channel with Live from the Masters, I watch every second of coverage. I just can't get enough of it. I love watching the press conferences that week. I just am a total Masters geek. Um, but, I mean, we've talked about this before. I mean, we're both golf junkies. I mean, we watch the European Tour. We watch the LP. We watch it all. Um, the John Deere Classic is always an event I've loved watching. Really? Just a total birdie fest. Um, sure. It's, it always seems like it's exciting finish usually in that tournament and guys just making birdies down the stretch. So for some reason, that's always been a tournament I, I look forward to. You know, it, it brings a little bit. It's a last chance to get into the Open exactly. Championship. Yep. So there's always a couple guys really mm -hmm. trying to get play their way into yeah. the Open and rushing to get their passports if they didn't think about them or whatever to, to fly over to, to Scotland. Uh, and, and a lot of times you'll have, because Spieth, Zach Johnson, some other bigger Steve, name Steve guys, Stricker. Steve Stricker, are usually in contention and yep. they're usually going against a very unheralded under the radar type of guy yeah so it's kind of neat to see that with yep. the star versus the the undercard well again I, I i hate to do this but i have to agree with with kyle um the masters is always my favorite maybe it's because it's eight months uh, from the end of the season until the masters every year it it has the longest build up we talk about it. we start talking about it as soon as the fedex cup is over uh we start talking about the masters next year and another thing for me, especially going into 2018, we talked about with Tiger Woods being back in the mix. Can you imagine if he would be in the last two or three groups on oh, Sunday? That TV rating would just oh, be astronomical. That would be fantastic. CBS would just, they'd oh. hit a home run with oh, that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, uh, another thing that, uh, that we've talked about and written about lately, uh, we've had articles in the Ohio Golf Journal, uh, plus your colleague uh, at the uh, Blade, Dave Briggs, uh, recently posted an article about the renovations to Inverness here in Toledo. Uh, and given those changes, do you see a major championship ever coming back to Toledo? Yeah, I mean, it'll still at the soonest be about 10 years because the majors, I think, until 2027. I think they're out to 2028 right 2028, now. okay. Yeah. So they're all handed out. But, I mean, that said, it, it has a feel of inevitability at this point, I think. I mean... Everyone in the golf community seems extremely excited about what they've done in Inverness. Andrew Green has done a great job. I know you've been out there. Um, 
it just is almost back to, you know, what Donald Ross meant for it to be. Uh, it seems like the USGA, there's a lot of momentum. That they went to, to Chambers and Aaron Hills and stuff. Now maybe they want to go back to the classic courses they've been to. The PGA Championship uh, also maybe, you know, come back to some of these classic courses. It'll be interesting to see how May works with the PGA. Everyone in Inverness says the weather would not be a non-factor and it'd be fine and all that. Um, but it, it really feels like they're going to get a major. I hope they get a major. I think they deserve to get a major. I think they've gone far too long. It's been since 1993. Uh, I mean, it's, this is a great course in the entire world. Uh, and, and I know the infrastructure is different in a city like Toledo, and maybe there's not enough, you know, Fortune 500 companies and stuff like that. But I think Inverness deserves it, and I think it's going to get it. And I think this will be a really exciting summer because uh, I think there's going to be a ton of these architect and, and golf writing gurus who come yeah. to see the finished product. Yeah. And, yeah. and the, the press will become more and more. To hear their response. Yeah. What they're, and you and I have both been there. We've seen the new halls. Um, the par threes, especially Andrew yeah. Green, did a fantastic job on those, and then some even the par fours. They expanded the greens a little bit to add in some additional pin placements, which was always kind of a knock in Inverness. The greens were too small, and some areas were too underling. They they had limited pin mm -hmm. placements on the greens, yep. and so he's opened some of those up, and really makes a lot of difference where you hit the ball in the fairway even now. The, no, absolutely. to make the angle into the pin to give yourself the best chance at birdie. Yeah, I mean. We're probably biased. I know I'm biased. I mean, I love Inverness. Um, but I think people from all over are going to love these changes when they see them in the spring. I mean, do, do you agree? Or? I, I, I do. Yeah, there's nothing not to like. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Andrew Green has definitely done a great job in laying out, returning to the original style. The Fazios took some liberties with the golf course when they were working on it in the 80s uh, without regard to what Ross uh, had intended from the original designs. And Green had gone back at the USGA's uh, museum, found old photos, returned it. And, as a matter of fact, the new greens actually were returned exactly like those greens were from back then. So he's done a fantastic job in, in renovating the golf course. Yeah, well, it's interesting too, how he's kind of become like the Fazio Ross guy, because he went to Oak Hill too, and also yep. did work there. So he's obviously very familiar with what Donald Ross intended to happen. And uh, it was cool. He, sh he showed me some of the old drawings they got. I mean, they're hundreds, uh, over a hundred years old or whatever of, yeah. of what Donald Ross had, had written out, how he wanted the course to be. Yeah, so that's pretty it, cool. And I, uh, if you get a chance to come to Toledo, if you know someone and if you can get on Inverness, uh, you're not going to believe the changes. The course is just absolutely wonderful. And uh, we, we think that uh, we're pretty confident that a major will come here. Uh, one of the points I was going to make, you, you mentioned May for the PGA Championships, it's moving to May. I think May is going to be a tough sell uh, for the PGA here in Toledo. Uh, you know, Jack Nicklaus has the Memorial Tournament. He used to have it over Memorial Day weekend, the last week of May. And it just, every year it seemed like he would get snow, he would get cold, he would get rain. Mm -hmm. Moving one week to June, he's had, so pretty, he's had pretty good weather. Once in a while he'd get a bad day or so, but up here, you know, in May, that's going to be tough. And I just think the PGA is already dead set on going to some of these places that haven't gone because it opens up a whole new. I mean, Texas has not hosted a major since 1968, yeah. which is just mind boggling to think about. Yeah. So, you know, they're probably going to go there. They're probably going to go to Florida. So, I mean, some of these northern places like Rochester, where Oak Hill's at, Toledo, Inverness, I don't know. It's going to be a little shaky. Obviously, there's no way Whistling Straits or uh, yep. um, what's in Chaska, Minnesota. Um, oh, uh, Hazel 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 Hazeltine. Like, yeah. they're, they're out. I mean, there's no yeah. way they can do it now. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Well, that's why it has to almost be a USGA. Mm -hmm. And the other point with we're going to kind of get a dress rehearsal with a 2019 U.S. Junior Championship here. And then we're also going to have the Solheim Cup in 2021 at Emirates. So those are going to be like little dress rehearsals mm -hmm. to see if we can get that major. So uh, I, I think it looks positive. Everyone we talk to says Inverness definitely deserves it, especially, you know, they've got Do John Zimmers to come in from, yeah. from Oakmont as the head greenskeeper, the superintendent. He, he's very familiar with doing USGA setups, the renovation project. They're doing everything that they need to do. Um, so we just hope it kind of falls together for them. 
So let's talk just a little bit. You're a little bit younger guy. I'm a little bit older than you are, just by a couple of years, okay? So, you know, we keep reading this stuff and hearing this stuff. Millennials aren't playing golf, okay? Um, you played it in high school. You've played your whole life. Uh, you've been involved in golf. Um, is there something to this millennial thing? Is there something we can do to make golf more attractive for them? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest problem, I mean, I'm a golf junkie. I love it. I've played it, like you said, since I was, you know, five years old. Uh, I mean, I think the biggest problem is how long it takes. I think millennials are in a rush for, you know, instant results, instant everything. I think the fact that a round takes four hours maybe isn't the most appealing thing. Uh, to me, it's not a problem. So, it, I mean, there's been a big push by the USGA these last, I don't know, five, 10 years maybe of nine holes being more and more. There's been talk of like 12 and 13 hole golf courses, mm -hmm. which I think is a great idea. Short, Tra go short golf courses yeah. at, at different places. Traditionalists don't like it, but I mean, if you want to grow the game and get more people involved, I think those are some of the directions that yep. you need to go in. Let's talk a little bit about technology because, you know, we've got the Greg Norman just came out with the shark experience where he's going to have little TV screens on every golf yeah. cart. And so you can get TV, you can get to sports events, news, tips, um, music, all yeah. kinds of stuff. That a lot appeal. of people listen to music now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, TrackMan has become such a big thing. And TrackMan just opened the first TrackMan range up at Carl's Golf Land in Detroit, which is a phenomenal thing. I went up there and saw that. That's outstanding. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just technology in general, in, in clubs and balls and in all the stuff that you have, range finders. Uh, you know, kids are used to their technology, playing video games and being involved in that. I, I think that will kind of draw some kids in also. Absolutely, because they don't want to, it's something they're connected to at all moments. And just because they're out on the golf course playing golf, they don't want to become disconnected to it. <laughs> don't go, oh, yeah, the world, yeah, yeah you, can't, you can't possibly put your cell phone away for three or four hours. Uh, I think the Norman thing's really interesting. I heard him talking about that last week during the Shark Shootout telecast. I think that's got a ton of potential and is a really cool thing. And like the music part, I've played with a few friends who always listen to music and have those little yep. portable things. It doesn't bother me at all. I actually kind of Once like you get it. used to it. Yeah, it keeps you kind of loose and you listen to some good songs or whatever. Uh, so yeah, I think it's there's a lot of potential there. We, um, we have the opportunity to get to play a lot of great golf courses, okay? <laughs> uh, just last year, we got to go to Aaron Hills, uh, uh, head of the uh, U.S. Open. Uh, hopefully we get to go to Shinnecock this year. Uh, you know, we got to play a ton of good stuff, and uh, I know you have uh, as well. Um, what do you feel is the best course or your most favorite course that you've ever played? Wow, that's a good one. Um, huh. Maybe Scioto Country Club in Columbus. Oh, good choice, yeah. I don't, it, very steeped in history. It, it just feels like you're walking amongst, you know, the greats that have played there and, and succeeded there. You can just kind of imagine where Jack might be exactly. playing different shots from. Yeah. Bobby Jones and his famous yeah. shot on 18, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, I don't know, pure golf course. I, I mean, Muirfield just it never gets old playing at Muirfield just because, I mean, every year there's a huge event there. It's Jack's tournament, all the great things Tiger's done there. So that's always fun. And it's just this massive golf course, just wide fairways and everything. Um, Aaron Hills was just a treat, especially because they had all the grandstands and everything up. Um, but yeah, that's a great question. I think Scioto still is, ki is kind of my favorite. Inverness is up there as well. Um, I'm gonna go just a little bit different uh, direction. Um, you know, uh, I, I, um, I take a little different tack when evalu evaluating a golf course. Number one, yeah, tradition and history are, are very big for me, like Scioto, like Inverness, uh, these kind of places. Um, but also, if a golf course is too hard, uh, I tend to not put it high on my I list. Agree. I agree. Uh, you know, because 99% of the golfers are not professionals, they're amateurs. They want to go out and have a good time, enjoy the game. Yeah. They don't want to make double and triple bogeys all the time. Yeah. So, um, along that note though, uh, I played the ocean course in Kiwa and um, it's definitely one of the most difficult golf courses in the world, mm -hmm. but we played it from the forward tees and I had a blast. I enjoyed playing the ocean course. Here's one of the most, Pete Diamond, one of the most difficult golf courses in the world, but it's fun to play. So I really like the ocean course. 
That leads me back to what you previously said about millennials. Okay. Too many people play the wrong set of tees. Yeah. There is nothing that yeah. gets on me more than that. That yeah. would make fun golf more fun. Play the right distance. Yo, I, I, <laughs> I, last summer I was on a golf trip and uh, it was seven men and one woman. And so on one of the days uh, we were paired, there was a foursome with the one lady and three of the guys. And so one of the guys in the group said, we're just gonna all play from the forward tees where the ladies would normally tee from uh, to join you. And we'll... it was a blast. Yeah. It was so much yeah. fun playing from those uh, up tees. Uh, I, I'm sold, I, yeah. I'm a believer. I, I wanna add just a couple more courses though before we get away from it. The coolest course that I've ever got a chance to play or been around, Seminole in Florida. It, it just the cool factor is off the charts there. You know, you can go in the locker room, sit and have some lunch after. It's, <laughs> it, it's pretty cool. Uh, and then two courses uh, that are both in Michigan, uh, Crystal Downs and the Kingsley Club. Kingsley Club is relatively new. Crystal Downs is an old Alistair McKenzie. Uh, it's just, it's outstanding. Uh, Kingsley, Kingsley is a new course designed by uh, Mike DeVries. Did a fantastic job. It, it, it's beautiful. It looks like it looks like the course was built in the twenties. Yeah. Like it was a McKenzie built in the twenties. It just it has that feel and look to it. It's absolutely phenomenal. But when I boil it all down, the most fun I have playing golf is at Ottawa Park here <laughs> in Toledo. Okay. I, I it's just that little old golf course, fifty four hundred yards from the back tees. But when you look at it, um, I had a friend come in here a few years ago and he played it and he said, you know, this is like a little Augusta National. And it, it really is. It has the roll to it. It doesn't have the length, but it, it's got some trees and it, it's, it's just a fun little golf course yeah. to play. I, I tell you, one thing I didn't say, uh, I played at Anchorage Golf Club in Alaska this summer. Oh, really? And it was fine. It, it was, it's, the, it's the number one rated course in the state, but I mean, it was... It was a normal public course, basically, but we were there in the in the heart of the summer. So I played at midnight, and it was daylight, you know, all sure. throughout the night. So, so from an experience standpoint, that was one of the coolest oh, golf yeah. experiences yeah. I've had. Where have you not played that's at the top of your bucket list? Uh, I mean, I guess Augusta. The chances of playing there aren't very likely. <laughs> um, but oh, I mean, you're young. You got a lot. Of time. Yeah, I mean. Maybe the number one course where, where it is realistic, you know, to get on is Pebble Beach. I mean, the, the vistas, you, the views. Yep. I, I actually went to the 2000 US Open there, um, so, so I've been able to see it and everything. But that is a place I think I would love to play. Cypress Point, too. Yep. Um, there's just something about... Pasa I'm a big Pasa ocean... Pasa Tampa. Yeah, Pasa there. Tampa. Yeah. Yeah. There's two, three or four other great golf. Yeah, I'm a huge there. ocean guy. Yeah. Um, so when you combine golf with that, it doesn't get much better. I would love to play the ocean course too, which you mentioned. It's 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 phenomenal. Um, I, high on my list is Band of Dunes. Um, mm -hmm. And um, we have some family that lives in Oregon. and So we get out there about once a year. And uh, I'm going to get there one of these days. But I, I really want to get to Band of Dunes. I want to see that. Um, it, it looks phenomenal to me. And uh, plus, I'm a core Crenshaw, uh, Tom mm -hmm. Doak, uh, David McClay kid. I'm a fan of all those uh, course designers. So I really want to see those, those courses. Let's talk about one more thing before we wrap up today. Um, this is another thing about rules uh, that's, that's really getting bandied about a little bit. And um, do you think the golf ball should be rolled back for professionals? Are they hitting it too far? Do they need to limit the golf ball? Yeah, I struggle with this one. I flip flop back and forth between <laughs> yes and no. If you do it, I, I don't know, I just, I hate that it becomes kind of the same game for everyone, in a sense. I mean, people that bomb the ball should kind of have that advantage. Um, it makes it kind of a different game than what the amateurs are playing. Because, I mean, it's just different equipment and everything. Um, at the same time, obviously, it does protect some of these classic courses. Um, I hate that Augusta's, you know, this mammoth course now. Um, and, and that some other classic courses have to be extended, you know, 7,700 yards, I think is what Inverness is yeah, now. Yeah. Um, so that part of it, I, I kind of dislike, but I mean, it, at the end of the day, I don't know. I think I'd rather just have the boy it is now and, and keep the golf ball the same. And I mean, at the end of the day, I, I know they've lengthened, you know, a lot of these major championship courses, but I mean, I, I don't know if it's ever going to get to the point where Augusta is 
they're going to be shooting 20 under every year on it or whatever. It seems like the course still kind of protects itself. Um, so I, I don't know if I'm a big fan of it, but I know a lot of the pros are. I mean, Jack Nicholas has been leading this charge for a long time. Yeah, Tigers jumped yeah. on board. Uh, Gary Player, um, you know, different people have, have said, you know, they really feel they need to roll the golf ball back. I, I tend to feel it's more of a knee-jerk reaction. I yeah. know it's been building. It's not really an overnight thing. It's been building for a while. Mm -hmm. um, even now with Nick Price on the uh, board of the USGA, they feel that that's one of the things that Mike Davis warned him on that board because he's in favor of rolling back the golf ball. So they really feel that they're going to do that down mm -hmm. the road. Um, I, I go back in history. Whenever something, an issue like this comes up, I try to think back in history to something that might be similar. And do you think, uh, do you think they had a, an issue when, uh, when they went from the feathery to the gutta percha? Yeah. Oh, these guys are just hitting yeah. it so far. Yeah. We can't, you know, there's no way. We can't, <laughs> we can't do it. And then they went from the gutta percha to the, to the, to the rubber ball, yeah. okay? And then, oh my goodness, they're hitting 20 yards farther. This can't be. It's ruining the game. <laughs> okay, and now we go to, then we go to Serlin, and now we go to the, to the multi-layer ball, okay? Yeah. And so, yeah, they're hitting it farther they still have to get the ball in the hole, yeah. okay? So I, I, I'm not a big, I'm not in favor yeah. of rolling it back for the pros. Yeah, and kind of the ultimate thing is the most of the open rota courses haven't changed significantly in distance. And I mean, you can go back 150 years and the scores are still relatively the same. I mean, one year at St. Andrews, 15 under a win, and the next time it'll be like seven under. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I don't yeah. like it. It depends a lot on the weather too, yeah, especially yeah, yeah. in Skyline. You get yeah. wind or you get a lot of rain, cold, whatever. It'll make a lot of difference. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not. I'm just not a fan. Um, you know, they, they've tried to tiger-proof tournaments. Remember mm -hmm. when he was really playing so well in the 2000s, and and they found that if they lengthened the course, he still had the best yeah. short game it, in the world. It, so it kind it didn't of the matter. opposite effect, Exa honestly. Exactly. I mean, yeah. yeah. It, the only thing they can really do if they want to pinch in fairways in landing areas, you know, but then you're forcing guys to hit to the same spot, so that's not really fun either. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't have the right answer. I'm not smart enough to know. I've been watching the game for about 50 years. Uh, but I know I like it the way it is. Yeah. I don't really want to see it change. Yeah. I mean, look at Jordan Spieth. I mean, he's not some huge hitter. He's not the longest he, guy. Yeah, I mean, it's there's a lot of guys. That, I mean, Zach Johnson continues to have success. I mean, there's plenty of guys that don't hit it far that are still right in the hunt, you know, often in majors. It's been great having Kyle in to talk with us today, uh, covering some of these issues. So, Kyle, thanks for stopping by. Absolutely. We'll try and have you back again sometime. Sounds great. Thanks. Till next time, back Niners.